What's going on, everybody? You're watching The Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Pleasure to be hanging out with Tiffany DuPont. How are you? Nice I to meet you. I am amazing. Nice to meet you. Welcome to New York. Thank you. Oh, this is my city. I love yeah. it here. Oh, yeah. Well, NYU was supposed to be your spot. It was supposed to be my spot. I was one of those kids at 10 years old. I had a list of colleges I was going to. NYU was the first one. Did not go to NYU or any of the other schools. It was like Boston, New York, and I think Chicago were oh, my wow. like, top cities. So like Northeast, Midwest, yeah, and, then you went, and then Georgia. And I ended up at Georgia. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> they, um, they moved me there my senior year of high school, mm. and it kind of just worked out where there was no other choice. I got a couple scholarships and... Boom, I was a Georgia Bulldog, which was so fun, actually. I actually had a great time. Not a bad spot to be. No, it was great. The football games were amazing. And, good. and I'm wearing red and black, see? There you go. You got your colors. And the Greek life. Yes. Certainly pretty big there. Yes, yes. I um, I was not, everyone asks, if I was in a sorority, and I was no. not, um, but I dated a boy who was in a fraternity, so I got to experience Greek life mm. anyway, just via all of the away dances and trips and everything else. It well, was great. Well, you're pretty busy with your Dave Matthews cover band. I mean, <laughs> we were on fire. Okay, we were just talking about this. So I play the violin and um, got a degree in music. And uh, my freshman year, I saw this crash symbol on a poster mm. at the School of Music. And um, this guy was like, if you know Dave's songs, call this number. And so I end up calling him. And we, uh, we both knew that we like knew all the songs. And we were like, let's do this thing. And so we played one we played, I think it was a charity. We played one charity event. Oh, it was Dance Marathon. Do, mm. do all colleges have that? Yeah, there's a bunch of them. That okay, have that. Yeah, yeah. so it was Dance Marathon, so all the Greek system, the entire Greek system was there. We killed it, and suddenly we were hired out. And you guys were touring Definitely. the Southeast. The Southeast, <laughs> Old Miss, <laughs> South Carolina, obviously Georgia. Where else did we go? North Carolina? I guess that's not as, yeah. Yeah, it was in Tennessee. We went to Nashville. We were all over the place. So, it was like, amazing. how much were you getting a gig? There was one night we played Georgia Theater, which is pretty epic. How I many mean, people does massive, that see? Massive. I actually don't know how many people it fits, but John Mayer shot his. So, um, like, thousands, are we say? Yeah, it was, it's big. Wow. It's big. And we sold it out, no problem. And I remember we each went home with a grand that night. Wow. From the door. Oh, my God. So, they made more than that. I mean, mm. as a college kid, just playing the violin. I was like, we're good. <laughs> we're so good. And I, I was saying that at one point it got so big that the guys were like, okay, we're going we're gonna to drop out of school to do this full time. <laughs> You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, it's a cover band. We can only get so far. What are we doing? Like, if this is our own music, I get sure, it. Sure, it'd be one thing. Yeah, no, we were, it was so fun. But um, the one thing that was hard, though, there were a lot of stages that were maybe three feet off the ground. And I, I'm a girl playing the violin and drawing college boys. Can only imagine mm. the things that were being hollered at me from N yeah. from afar, not, not a so, great situation, not so far away. <laughs> and you were allowed to smoke in public back then, so you just got people like smoking in your face all night. I'm not a not a big fan. No. And like, uh, I feel like I was very like angry guarded. <laughs> the angry guard violin <laughs> mean player. face. <laughs> like, don't look at me like that while I was playing. Now I would have more fun and just like laugh at them. Um, uh, but it was it was great. It was super great. Can you listen to Dave Matthews now without thinking about that? No, it just never. all has to be all tied Absolutely. together. Absolutely, right? I can't say that I listen to Dave Matthews anymore. Well, I think um, you probably graduated I, from that phase I of your life. I've grown out of it. Yeah, but it's so it's still some good music. Great musicians. Yeah, super great musicians. And it made the violin talented. a cool thing to do yeah. outside of just being in an orchestra. Boy Tinsley thrown mm, yeah. down. <laughs> I, I learned about electric violins. I have two. Um, it's cool. Do you it's, still play? I do. So I always explain to people that. Classical violin is almost like um, a ballerina on point. So mm. sh uh, someone who can dance on point can always dance, but if you're going to be on point, you have to be training the technique, your muscles, or if you just throw on some point shoes out of nowhere, you'd hurt yourself. Absolutely. You can't yeah. do that. So I won't hurt myself playing the violin, but I can't just bust out Vivaldi like, no big deal No, you can't right just now. walk right into it. I can't just, no, yeah. it's going to take me like a couple <laughs> weeks at least to work it up, um, but I can always play the violin mm. and like people who have bands. You know, they're like, hey, can you come in and do a little thing in the background? And I love that. Um, or like a live show somewhere in L.A. or New York. Yeah, it's a cool thing to um, have in the repertoire. Yeah, Why it's not? super fun. Yeah, yeah, it's so fun. I love it. That's um, awesome. So totally. did you ever think about music as a career before the acting thing? That's, no. God, I when I was like four or five, I decided I was going to be an actress. I had no idea what I was talking about. Well, why'd you um, know at that point? I just, I, I it made so much sense to me to make the stories on the TV. I was like, of course. And I all these things I liked and thought were fun um, that I was kind of already doing. Like um, what? Uh, being silly and laughing and like, I, I, 
I would act out full on things in my bedroom. I had bunk beds and like I would jump from the, I was Aladdin a lot. Um, <laughs> one jump ahead of the, I like sang the whole song wow. and like did the thing. So you're just performing from a young age. Yeah, for no one, just because I was gonna do it. Um, and so it just made sense to me. Um, I actually wanted to be a singer first for like one second. And then I was like, no, I can make the stories. It's even better than singing, I'm doing that. Um, and so I just kind of was like, I, I decided but it's a kid, you don't know what you're talking about. Of course, yeah. um, And then as I got older, things that naturally made sense about my personality just lend themselves so well to this job and they just kept evolving and becoming more and more, more, and more clear that that actually was what I needed to do. Mm. So music, my, my parents, they're so great. They were like, guys, you gotta go to school, you gotta eat three meals a day, day and you have to play a musical instrument. Those are the rules. Those are the requirements. They're the rules. Wow. I'm like, you can't debate this. Like, you're gonna say I'm not going to school today? No, <laughs> you gotta pick an instrument. So. Um, classic Tiff DuPont style. I was like, which one has all the solos? <laughs> Give me that one. You wanted the shine. Yep. And then um, um, I heard it was, and then I was like, uh, oh, orchestra's a year before band. Let's start now. Give me the one with all the solos. <laughs> Violin. Done. I'm doing it. Um, that's how that happened. And it was really hard. Mm. It was really hard. Yeah, I'm sure you realize that pretty quickly. It's pretty, it sounds like a dying cat when you start. Yeah, it's rough. <laughs> I, yeah, it, I tried playing the trumpet. Oh, And, so and no. it's the same thing, it, like the Squeaky mouthpiece, is, it takes uh, time. The embouchure, do you say embouchure for trumpet? I don't know. You say it for clarinet. I think for clarinet. My yeah. sister plays the clarinet. Okay. The only reason I know that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was hard. And I, I was told years later, I ended up getting a scholarship to play music at UGA, mm. but um, I say that because I think between fourth and sixth grade, my parents told me later that I was really bad <laughs> and I wasn't getting better. <laughs> <laughs> um, I recall not wanting to practice and wanting to throw it across the room and see it shatter into a million pieces. I had that vision many times. And apparently I had some little solo ensemble performance in like sixth or seventh mm -hmm. grade and they were like, suddenly we heard something. Like it shifted and like hmm. you like got past whatever hump you were in, got over, got that over it. Yeah. And like it started sounding good and they were like, okay, let her, don't tell her, she, make, make her keep going. <laughs> like, they were gonna let me quit. Wow. They were gonna tell me I could stop, but then they heard it, something change, and thank God they didn't, because I, I mean, ended up going to school for it. I mean, your life looks a lot different if you yeah. quit at that point. Yeah, and also maybe the idea of thinking like, oh, I couldn't do that. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I wonder what seed that could have Good planted. learning lesson. Yeah. yeah. I'm proud of them for like hanging in there with me. Absolutely. You know? So, I don't know. you're doing the music thing, your family yeah. is moving around a bunch yes. as a kid. So, yes. what was your childhood like in terms of the type of young girl that you were? Um. Kind of, ex <laughs> kind of like I'm being right now. <laughs> it's, it's really loud. A lot has it changed. <laughs> loud. You got a lot of energy. I have like. a lot of energy, and yeah. I don't. The joke is, I don't uh, really. I don't do drugs or do. I drink normal with dinner, but I don't really get too out of control. And a couple of good friends of mine are like, I can't imagine you on drugs because <laughs> you're already so. Because you're already kind of bouncing off the walls. Yeah, or like, you sure you didn't take something? I'm like, it's just the way I am. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I was always like really happy and playing, and I'm super grateful to be able to say I have a great family, and we're all really close. Um, I feel like as an adult now, looking back like how did my parents figure out how to make sure we had dinner together all mm. of us every single night yeah i don't know it's an thing. so hard yeah and they did it and um we moved a lot uh my father designs airplanes and so it's investor based so we just were always wherever we needed to be um for that but um, i was happy and loud and my sister is the opposite of me she's um I'm also smart, but she's super smart. I didn't mean to say. <laughs> yep. Um, she's super smart and was always reading and mm. like more, more sh not shy, but just more quiet. More so. introverted. Yeah. yeah. And so I was really probably very annoying mm. for her. Polar um, opposite in yeah, a couple different ways. She will be nodding right now whenever this <laughs> airs that I was. Um, but I didn't know I was like being. You're just being you. Yeah. I was yeah. being, you know, you got to be in the mood for a lot of energy. <laughs> hey, you just own it. That's what it's all yeah, about. Yeah. I mean, you know? And again, like that lends itself to this job. Sure. You know, and I love that energy for actually behind the scenes on camera, and not on camera, when you're on set, because there's so much downtime. Yeah. We're all just sitting there. And if I can go to set, hair and makeup, whatever, and have a conversation with even just one person that makes them feel better, like that mm -hmm. means everything to me. Totally. You know, and I've a few times been told, maybe the best thing you could tell me, the highest compliment, that, oh my gosh, you have great energy. We needed your energy today. Thank mm. you for your energy. Like, there have been a few times I've heard that where people are tired or... 15 hours, 16 yeah, hour days, and then I'm like, people what are, are doing? <laughs> Let's do this. And they're like, it's four o'clock in the morning. Is she on something? <laughs> like, she, she's on something, cool. Um, and, but it's like lifting people up and having fun, yeah. you know? I have a few stories about that. Uh, I don't want to jump ahead, but um, from 911. 
Yeah, we will definitely get to yeah. those. I want to talk to you first about yes, Brian Banks here. By all means. Because I watched this movie and we were talking off camera. It really puts things in perspective. Yeah. And it's not just about a rising football player being charged with rape. It's really close. about a lot more. So how did you first jump into the project? So I get this audition to play, I do my homework and I read, uh, I look up this girl, Alyssa Biracle, mm -hmm. which I could not even say her name because it was spelled so funny. Yeah. Um, she taught me how to say it, but I look her up and I'm like, cool, she's uh, got ice white blonde hair and super white skin and green eyes. I'm obviously not gonna book her, right. cool. And I had short, my hair was shorter than this, short dark hair and I look like this. So I think, okay, this will just be a really fun audition. I wanna meet this director and I love this casting office. Let me just go have fun, that's it. And in the, the original script, it read kind of just like a, a smart lawyer. Mm. That's kind of all I would say. So I go in and I do it and kind of like we are now laughing and talking, um, I do my audition and then Tom Shadiak, who's one of the most incredible human beings, I'm so grateful to know him, he is, just starts talking to me about life and me and him and the casting director were all just hanging out, Leah Daniels Butler and her associate, and we're just laughing mm. and talking, having a blast, and halfway through it, talking about nothing to do with the film, halfway through it, Tom looks at me and he goes, could you dye your hair? And I was like, what? Oh, am I, am I in the mix <laughs> Are we doing this, this thing? Like yeah. And I was like, yeah, whatever you want, I'll shave it, make it purple, whatever, <laughs> anything, you, of course. Yeah. So um, I had no idea that that was sort of the beginning of him seeing me as Alyssa. And funny enough, once I met Alyssa after booking the role, she and I have so many weird, funny, interesting things in common. Like what? Um, a tattoo. The, the same tattoo? Uh, not the same tattoo, but the same placement, which is very specific. We <laughs> are both Aries. She's like a week behind me. Um, also grew up playing music. Wow. She's like, like also her personality, she's super gregarious mm. and larger than life. Um, I think she's one of the most phenomenal human beings I've ever met, and I'm super lucky to be emulating her at all. Um, she's hyper intelligent and just super loving. But we just we were just laughing and having a blast. But um, it was interesting to have no insight to seeing a way to booking this job and mm. then it becoming such an important part of my life. Yeah. And now and then we all know Brian and. It's a family, or it's it's one of the most incredible things I've gotten to be a part of so far. What was it like meeting Brian? He's He's got such a presence. Um, I met him on set, and I knew I was going to meet him. Yeah. And he was on set every single day, except for the scenes in prison. He could not be a part of that. I can understand that. And also the scene where um, he, um, I don't want to give anything away. I'll, there's another really powerful scene. He couldn't be there. It was just too much. Mm. But um, he, he's, He's got a quiet power mm. that's so kind and so pure that I, I, I'm trying to describe it. It's hard. He's so genuine and so, um, uh, he can't believe his life is what it is. Yeah, I mean, you know? because it was looking like it was going to go a certain yeah. way, that he's in prison, he's on probation, yep. and that's just going to be the way things are because he couldn't even get a job. He couldn't know. And, couldn't do anything. You know, any of us, let's say, you have something happen in your life and you have a certain reputation now, or I don't know, I, I, I don't know what a like, common day example is, but it can happen to anybody, sure. like, you know, or someone says something about you that maybe isn't true and now everyone thinks it. So imagine that on crack times a million because you went to prison for supposedly raping someone. Mm. Even when they let you go, you're now, now a, um, a sex offender for the rest yep. of your life. And he had an ankle brace on, couldn't play sports, and every time he tried to get a job, people were like, Oh, you maybe or maybe not rape. Like you might have raped somebody. Sorry. Yeah. Couldn't date. Could, he had couldn't no go certain places if mm -mm. a park is within 200 feet. No, yeah. Everything. Well, and Alyssa told me, and this is what's so amazing. She, he would not give up, hmm. and that's in the film. He would not give up asking for help. And they they were saying to him, listen, we've got people that are still behind bars. Right. That have been behind the bars behind bars for 20 years. And you're out. You're out. Yeah. You're fine. Like yeah. we don't. You don't need us. You don't need our help. And he was like, I'm not out. Hmm. I'm still in prison, per this whole example. And she told me that she could not believe how compelling he was. And he said, listen, I'm young. I still have a life. I could still play football. Right. And so for her, she was the first person to hear Brian's story. And she brought it back to CIP, which we didn't get to show that in the film. But just to honor her, I love being able to tell people that. Um, and she said, 
guys, this guy could actually still have his dreams. It's one thing to get somebody out of prison, which is incredible. Sure. But a lot of those people are older and they've lost their lives to being behind bars and they just are grateful to be out and be able to hug their families, which is incredible. But this was a young guy who might still be able to make everything happen for himself. Yeah. And, and then she saw his compassion and, and sort of how I described him, he's just so special. And she said to him, I'm gonna do whatever I can mm. to help you. I don't, we don't have the time or the resources, but I'm gonna figure it out no matter what, I promise you. And then she brought his case back to CIP and they love Alyssa, she's, she's the hero. She's one of the heroes. There's uh, so many amazing people there. Definitely. No, Just, but she, I mean, she really drove she's things special. forward. Yeah. Because there were, there were some doubts and a little trepidation yes. in terms of taking this case on. Completely, and she fought for that and um, now we have this movie and it's not, you know, it was her and Justin and everybody, everybody worked so hard, but um, funny about that, the original script, first of all, did not even um, have Alyssa in it. Hmm. Justin, the real Justin yeah. Brooks, um, was like, guys, I'm so happy we're making this movie, <laughs> except we can't make it. We're missing a big piece. Uh, my best friend on the planet, my number one right-hand woman, mm -hmm. um, is why part of why this even happened. We have to have her in there. So when I first read the draft I got, she kind of seemed like just a generic lawyer. Mm. And then I got to know her and understand what happened. And then I, I very scared, I was very scared to ask Tom, um, can we please flesh out this character a little bit more? Because it seems like you're trying to make it about you and oh, I want right. to have more acting in the movie. And it was not about that. Alyssa needed, I felt, to be honored even Do more. Do it justice. Than, yeah. yeah. But still a big ask to go to the director and yes. be like, hey, you wrote this, we should change it. Well, he didn't write it, but he's right. Right. Well, but he's, the right, he's exactly. overseeing everything, right? Also, I mean, I had a pretty, um, well-known acting coach tell me I was risking getting kicked out of the movie if I asked. Seriously? And she's not wrong to say that because wow. that happens, things like that happen all the time. Tom is so open-minded and so compassionate and so he's very progressive. Hmm. Um, the fact that he saw me with short dark hair and was like, yes, you can play Alyssa Miracle. he can Miracle. see you for the role. Yeah, like yeah. he's already a visionary and, and just a different human in our industry. Um, that's a whole other conversation, he's so <laughs> incredible. But, uh, I felt like I could ask. I felt like I'd mm. still keep the role. I wasn't yeah. gonna get kicked out of the movie. And he was like, I was so nervous asking him. I remember he cut me off. He's like, What are you? What are you trying to ask me? What mm. do you want? Just tell you're me. Because stumbling a little yeah, bit. Yeah. He was like, Just tell me. And he was so sweet. He's like, Just tell me what you need. And I was like, Alyssa, this and that. And we, can we please find a way mm. to to put the, some of this in there? So, and we got it in. Yeah, and actually, I agree. Oh, yeah, you feel that. No, right? you definitely do. Yeah. yeah. So more for her than anything. One of my favorite scenes that I get to show more of my acting actually got cut. Oh really? So. Um, Greg and I have a scene that just sort of gave the plot away too soon. Mm. So, um, and it's Justin's favorite scene. I feel so bad. Justin Brooks' favorite scene. But, but your character is just this important heartbeat that's going throughout. Oh, just to say like, hey, because Justin's you. considering it, but you and the rest of the crew are like, no, we got to keep going. Yes. You go to see and Aww. see what's going on. So you definitely, even though it's in a smaller role comparatively, right. it still is an important role. And I'm I feel really like that, that personality, as you say it, is it, it cuts through. Good, that's awesome that, that, that you took that away. That's yeah. great. He wasn't paid to say that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Tom, okay. thinking about him, like this is the Ace Ventura guy yes. that is making Brian Banks. I mean, but we know about I Am. Yes. I mean, so I mean I Am. <laughs> uh, he is, he faced death didn't die, and yeah. then was like, what am I doing with my life? So that was like the big, he had the concussion, yeah. and the big pivot point for him was like, I'm gonna do some more serious stuff. Yes, and help society with yeah. my with my talents and my right. gifts, and moved to one of the, the lowest income um, communities in America to help people, provides jobs and opportunities. I'm not an expert on what Tom is doing in Memphis, so I don't wanna but say the wrong thing. But he's doing some work but down there to help people. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's you know, look, I think it's all of our responsibilities to help Absolutely. help each other and, yeah. and contribute to this beautiful life we get to live. Um, whether you're a custodian, a kindergarten teacher, a lawyer, or a movie star, it doesn't matter. We all have an opportunity, and that's personally my driving force as an actress. And to be able to partner with someone like Tom, who's also, that's what they're about, and then Monica Levinson and Amy Bear, our producers, same thing. It was just, it's a dream come true. Everyone on the project is, are people who want to help the world with what they're saying. Totally. And we got to do that with this beautiful man. Incredible so. story, and then like yeah. just superior acting. I mean, oh, all I the, agree. I mean, this is so all this, like that was some next level stuff. I mean, I mean, you've been around a lot of great people. What was it like watching that? 
So um, there, the scene. The, I don't want to say what happens, but the um, well, it's in the trailer. Yeah. Um, um, yeah uh, what is it? Sorry, I'm going to say the wrong line. Um, you want to see exceptional? Is it exceptional? Oh my god, I'm saying the wrong word. It's not exceptional. Is it exceptional? Which which um, line? Where he's is that? like, I I'm messing up a very important line. It was not my line in the movie, so I don't feel bad about it. Oh, um, oh, when you're talking about... His scene it, where he's breaking down. He's like, we need something extraordinary. Extraordinary, right. My we, brain. Need some, we need something extraordinary. He, he says, like, you want to... I am extraordinary. Right, right. That scene, every single one of us was on the floor. Like, we could not... Yeah, that was some powerful we stuff. We were shaking. I, I, had, I had a very simple contribution to that scene, and I kind of looked at it that day, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, I'm fine, I'm ready. Mm. And I go to set, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. I just got hit by a wave of... <laughs> depth and humanity and, and soul yeah. and emotion and we were all just like shaking he was so beautiful mm. and by the time the camera turned around on me i was like tom i'm i'm scared can we just like, take I'm a second like, <laughs> i've been crying all day for this man um it was it was such a beautiful scene and mm. i think it's one of my favorites if not most favorite scene of the movie yeah um and they show it in the trailer but it doesn't hit the same doesn't way do it will justice. when yeah. you watch it yeah for sure. it's it's profound and if aldis I hope he gets all the love and opportunity he ever wanted from this because of that Well, good work. time for him. He's got City on a Hill. Yeah. He's got this going. He's Not got too something bad. else going, too. I don't mm. want to say what it is, but he's, <laughs> he's doing great. Good guy to watch, yeah. that's for sure. And he's, then, and he's the best. Yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden, Morgan Freeman slipped into the movie as Random, well. Random. You and you're just like, wait a minute. This is like Hold on a second. quintessential Morgan Freeman role, he's giving perfect. advice. He and just, just shows up. He's best friends with Tom Shadyac, <laughs> which is very cool for everyone in our movie. We're very happy about that. Yeah. So that, I'm sure that was like, hey, Morgan, can you do this part? Yeah, and he's like, of course. Yeah, sure. What do you want me to do? I got you. That's how close they are. It's mm. awesome. Yeah. And then Greg Kinnear was great in this So as what's well. awesome about Greg Kinnear, I have two Brussels Griffins, okay. which if anyone wants to know, that's the dog in As Good As It Gets. Oh, yeah, yeah, so okay. So everyone's like, I oh, recently saw that for the first time, well, like a couple months back. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I can put it all together. No, yeah. my God, he totally knows. I just did. So um, that, I always am referencing this movie because people are asking me about my dogs. Yeah. And... I love Greg. Who doesn't love Greg? I mean, he's got some serious he's acting chops. He's the best. Yeah. And I just want everyone to know that Greg is exactly who you want him to be. He is the nicest, most easygoing, happy, great guy. Hmm. He makes you feel like your best friends immediately. He's so sweet without being like, I don't know. Too uh, much. Yeah, he's yeah. just the best. You're like, yay, you are you. That's Thank awesome. you. Because you never know. I've met people that you would hope were a certain way and they're mm. just not. Yeah, it kind of burst the bubble and you're just yes. like, oh man, I that's can't a bummer. Watch it. I can't watch you anymore. Yeah. I know the truth. <laughs> oh man, you're yeah. a really good actor. Mm. Wow, but anyway. <laughs> so you have this yeah. and then you've done some other great stuff. I mean, we were talking about Greek in oh, terms of goodness. that run for you. Yes. And some revisionist history for Franny in terms of the way that she's looked now on the show. I mean, so yeah, we were just at um, ATX Film Festival and a lot of fans came out. It was so nice. And quite a few people, I got schooled on how much people love Franny. Well, it's funny how much like people know about the character that you that played. I don't. And you're just I like, know. I don't know. It was just a job. <laughs> and you're like, you remember I when mean, Franny was in this scene? Like, no, no I, 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 don't, I don't actually. Tell me what happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would definitely not say that Greek was just a job. We we all really bonded. And there were a lot of kids on that show. And I say kids because majority of them were under 21 mm. when they were hired. Yeah. Who had never acted or were bartending prior the week before. And... Um, I was a, I was one of the veterans. I think me and Jake were the only. I might be misquoting that. That I think Scott might have as well. But it was a small crew. Yeah. That had actually done stuff. Before. Yeah, that had actually worked. And like then everyone, you know, you bond. And we were tr we were filming in a basement. So <laughs> where'd you um, guys film that? CBS Radford. Oh wow. But our stage was underground. Oh, so we would like not know what time it was. <laughs> it was like a time warp down there. We were just like trapped in the basement. Um, and you bond. Yeah. You know, and people grow up together and. It just all, it's a little family. So uh, it was a really powerful show and it was really nice being with everyone a mm. couple weeks ago and feeling the actual love from fans. It, it's, that's what it's all about. Especially you know? when you get some separation from the show yeah. and put it in perspective. Yes. Yeah. I picked a random episode. I was like, I should, I should watch the show before I go talk about it. I've Is just, it on streaming now? It's on Hulu. Oh, it's on Hulu. Yeah, okay, on good Hulu. to know. Yeah, so you can watch it. So what was the episode that you chose? I picked, I just picked one. I had no idea what it, I had no, I was like, I think I'm in this one and I picked it. <laughs> and Franny, starts the ickies. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I picked a great episode. You're like, great, let's just jump right back into she's this. She's terrible. Okay. 
doing all kinds of horrible things. Um, she and Rebecca leave mm. uh, ZBZ to start the Ickies, and I was That's like, this right. is a great, and I w Amber and I were interviewing together, and she was like, oh my god, I forgot about that, <laughs> the Ickies, and I was like, yes. I'm sure it kind of feels like a lifetime ago in, in some ways, right? Oh, yeah, oh my god, absolutely. <laughs> yes and no, we're like still so close, all of us, so. I feel like I see all those people, not all the time, but we're in each other's lives, which is awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So how about 911? I know that's coming back. What has yes. that experience been like for you? Um, so 911 is another kind of funny job. I didn't anticipate becoming what it did in, in the best possible way. I get an, an audition for a one episode guest star. Mm -hmm. That's in my world pretty easy. Yeah. It's, no, not a big deal. So, you know, you go have fun. Um, and I'm sitting in a waiting room with, you know, all kinds of girls, and I'm like, oh, they don't know what they want. There's like every kind of girl you can imagine is sitting here. Oh, cool. So, not. <laughs> and you've been in those rooms oh, where, yeah. yeah so it's you like, kind of get. They're all terrible. It, they're all <laughs> terrible and all awesome. Because if you sit in a room with everyone looks exactly like you, you're like, sure. Crap. Okay. I'm not. Okay, I don't know what to do. And then you see a bunch of different people are like, wait, what are they going they for? They don't know. Yeah. This is, everything's terrible. What, what the lesson is there is you are an individual and no one can be you. And that's your biggest and greatest power, which I've learned in the 16 years I've been doing this. Um, so you just kind of ignore the room and just be really nice to everybody. Yeah, doesn't just matter. Do you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's all you can do, and it ends up working in your best favor no matter what. And that's like kind of a lesson for life. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, but I go do my thing and I leave, and then I book it, and I'm like, oh, okay, oh yeah, that job, cool, I'll go do it. So we start filming this earthquake episode. Mm. And the guys at 911 are so innovative and creative and fun. They start getting into something and they're like, oh, wait, what? And they just realize that this could become much bigger than they originally mm. had scripted it. So it was supposed to just be one episode and halfway through filming it, um, Brad Buecher comes to me and he's like, okay, so we're making it two now. Um, you're like, all right, cool. We, have, we, we decided we're gonna do all this stuff. And then Tim Minier, these guys are the best. They, uh, they just told me, they were like, look, we loved what you were doing. Um, we want to write more. Also, we're going to build this gimbal. So a gimbal is like, imagine a, a big warehouse, mm -hmm. it's a, a soundstage, and then um, there's like a box, essentially. They make a room, and it goes up. And then because it's up on these, like, I don't know what you call it, just there, it's, like, it raises up, right. and they can move it. Mm. So we had a gimbal that tilted 30 degrees. So the entire room, this hotel room, went up, 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 up. We're harnessed in. Wow. The crew, everybody's harnessed in, and then the whole thing goes like a like a ride at an amusement park. I'm sure that was a new experience. It was amazing. 30 30 tilt, 30 degree tilt, which is actually a lot. Yeah. You can't stand up. It throws you off. Yeah. Um. You. I literally slid down the stage over and over and over toward the window. Everything we shot, we shot in six weeks. Happens in under three minutes on the show. You're like, what? That's the crazy um, thing, that it takes that amount yes. of time for this little tiny window in the show. Completely. Yeah. I, um, I'm very athletic, and I'm a dancer, and I'm, I'm physical, so I was super, super excited mm. to like do whatever I could right. physically. You're just jumping in. I loved it. Yeah. I didn't want to get hurt, but then I didn't feel like I was going to, and I didn't. Um, and my stunt double was amazing. She's so sweet. But we had so much fun. I was like, OK, what are we doing now? I'm in the thing, and da, da, da. And this is coming back to that energy thing, right. where they're like, We've been working 14 hours. Why are you so excited? <laughs> and I'm like, what do you You're mean? like, this is just me. The, the set's tilting. <laughs> We're going to follow the window. This is awesome. I have a stunt double here. I love here. this. It's I like... love everything I'm doing right now. <laughs> um, so I like my job. So that's good. That's definitely a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And you've been fun. doing it for 16 years, which is hard yeah. to find consistency in this business. So grateful that I can say that that has been the case. Absolutely. I have 1,000% had massive ups and Low, 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 lows. Not working for over a year and wow, yeah. What did that What did that look like for you? Um, that looked like having to move in with a boyfriend because I couldn't afford rent. Mm. That's what this that is looked in like. LA? Yes. Wow. Um, super nice guy to to help take care of me, but that's that's no way to be in a relationship. Right. <laughs> it's not where you want it to be, no, in too. No, and you feel terrible. And like, I was at a point in my career where I couldn't just go wait tables anymore. Right. Because you've done stuff. Yeah. yeah. And you, it, you're always, it's that whole fake it till you make it. Like, the right. perception of the town is a thing, for mm -hmm. sure. And you can't be serving some executive drinks right. when he might hire you to be the lead of his next job. You sure. just can't. It's so, like, oh, haven't I seen you in this, that, or the other thing? Yeah, too? you have. Yeah. You have seen me in that. Ooh. <laughs> so I never I never did that. So um, what you, what point in the journey was this? Like, how, how far in That was you? actually after Greek. So oh, it was post-Greek. Okay. Yes. Wow. I had this m really great trajectory up when I hit L.A. It was yeah. lovely. Like, the whole zeal of the naivete, I just, like, mm -hmm. shot right out. 
And then um, Greek was almost a demotion for me. Hmm. I was like doing bigger things, and I it was just one episode guest star again, and then they wrote more for her, and then yeah. the show got picked up, and then they kept having me back, and then it became a series regular. But it was right before the writer strike. Mm. Writer strike, right. and That's then right. the recession that none of us knew. So two terrible things that are yes. happening. Yes, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. And cut to celebrities are now doing television and auditioning for guest stars. Mm. This is unheard of, and those were my jobs. Right. Suddenly, I'm not those getting them yeah. if somebody really famous wants to do them. Sure. So I didn't. That was one contributing factor, and also leading female. It's hard. It's a catch twenty two. You know. It's a it's a crazy game. Definitely, and especially when people have seen you in one specific role. Yes, they think that's all you can do. Yeah, you're just stuck in there for yes. a little while. So how, how do you break out of that? Well, so random side note, I love motorcycles. I, I heard that. You yeah. did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love motorcycles. I don't know why it's so weird and random, but I love them, and I, I have... I've had three now, wow. um, and I grew up studying martial arts, so I have like this like funny tomboy side to hmm. me that doesn't maybe maybe. No, oh, but you have di many different dimensions yes. in your personality. And I'm like, I, thank you. Yeah, so nice. <laughs> um, but I'm like, I'm an actress. I'm not one. I'm not one note. I can right, do right. a lot of different things, but the town doesn't think so. And right. I play these like very clean cut, proper, smart girls. Mm. You know, which is great. I can do that too, and that's a part of me as well. But you got to change the narrative. Yes, there. and so we were like, "How do we?" And my my reps at the time knew this about me, and they saw it in me. Mm. And I ended up booking this Capital One commercial because the character rode a motorcycle. Oh, okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, with Alec Baldwin. That's and right. Yeah, okay. So ran so random. Um, and I actually. So that was the game changer. It was. I don't know if it was the game changer, but there were a few casting people that called and were like, "Wait, she rides a motorcycle?" Oh, she's with Baldwin on the motor. <laughs> That's crazy, Tiffany. And we're like, yes, you guys, we've been telling you. Wow. So that was part of it. And then one day I chopped all my hair off because mm. I was tired of being typecast as like, not the dumb. How long was it? was it? It was like long hair yeah. and I did Demi Moore short. Gotcha. Like I chopped it off. I don't know if anyone saw Murder in the First, but that was a character I played a reporter, um, like video blogger, mm. girl vlogger. And you had like super short hair. Super yeah. short hair. Um, and I loved it. And also that helped get me out of like the typical, there's so many stereotypes that like, yeah. can we just please get out can of it? move past that? Yes. Yeah, have more depth than just these characters. Yes, here. and there's, uh, you know, there's stereotypes with the short hair too. Sure. Like, oh, you must be a lesbian. Right, like, it's just the, the assumption based on how you look. Happy to play one, except yeah. no, but okay. There's much more to me. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. So um, that also helped change things. And there were some casting offices that were like, whoa, <laughs> you look totally different. Yeah. There's an edge to you. And I'm like, yes, there is. Let's do that. Um, and then recently I just played a cop on Proven Innocent, which I was so happy to mm. just be able to show that too. Right. There's like a whole other. Anyway, I know what I can do. We're just trying to get it out there for all of you guys. Well, what are the it. other types of roles that you'd like to play? Because like the way that I look at the industry now, it's like there's so many different streaming platforms. Yeah. Like there's a lot of availability, but at the same time, like what are the things you want to do? So, uh, so many things. Um, but right now at this stage in my life, the first thing that just an archetype example would be something like, um, Alias. Mm. If they were ever, I've heard rumors numerous times that they may bring it back. You'd be all in on that. I mean, it's perfect. That'd be a good one. It's perfect. Yeah. She's in her body. She's physical. She's tough, but she's still a woman. She's right. still feminine. She's still vulnerable with mm -hmm. this, you know, losing her father, the relationship, or losing her husband, all of that. And but a total badass mm. without overdoing that. Right. She's still a woman, yeah. you know, and can be like the vixen or like she has to play all these different roles. The duality yes. of that. Yeah. Yes. And I'm like, I was way too young. I would never. have been up for that job, but um, that's like, that kind of job is what I would love to do. I and everyone you. always goes, oh, Marvel, mm. which, who doesn't want to work for sure. Marvel? We all want, Marvel, DC Everybody Comics. Everybody wants to jump in, they're making money, yes. it's worldwide, yeah. Yes, we're all about Much that. easier said than done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you know, that kind of thing doesn't have to be for a comic book person, but um, mm. you know, something like that where I can, I can kick ass, Yeah. you know, like let's do that. Has there been a role that you didn't get? That you were just like, man, I wish I was in that show. I got two words for you. Everybody ready? Yep. Jessica Jones. Mm. Oh, one of the best auditions I've ever given. Well, you mentioned that and uh -huh. the whole superhero thing. Boom. I was like, I can't tell you how many people have called me and said, how did you not book that? Mm. You're so right for that. Oh my God, you know, I was watching the show. You're so, you should have played this role. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. And, and listen, I just wasn't famous enough. Mm. It's all good. Kristen's amazing. Yeah. I, it would have been different. It would have been a different Jessica. I don't know. It would have been different if I had done it, but it wasn't about. Did you who. still watch the show? Was it hard to watch? Um, I, I watched a scene that I read. Uh, I, I didn't 
care for what I saw. Mm. Um, she's well, lovely. I'm sure it's tough, but you think about how you would have done it. Yeah. And you think about your audition when you did said and I, scene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We had a different, we had a different, totally different take, but it's also a director sure. and there's a lot of contributing factors. And listen, I love watching other people's performances because you learn, A, what you did well and what you could have done differently sure. that you never would have done. It's so interesting. We're all so unique. This Absolutely. goes back to your power is you. Like, Absolutely. So, and she's doing an amazing job with it. It's just, I would have liked to also. Yeah, that, that would have been a good one. <laughs> that would have been a good one. <laughs> but who knows, it could be something down yeah. the road for you. And you just have to believe that you get the job you're supposed to get, you totally. know? So, we're still going. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, one of the early ones for you was Cheaper by the Dozen. Oh, it's my, that's, oh, it's my first movie. I was like, it's my first job, it's my first movie. And I was gonna, I was thinking back, I'm like, what was the role? And I was like, oh yeah, The Girlfriend. Well, so that's a Hollywood, Hollywood story. Um, I get called, <laughs> my agent at the time, says to me, um, they need our best, tallest brunette. You're like, is that really an ask? Is that a thing? Like, um, okay, on. and they're like, we're sending you. And like, I was like, okay, great. Great. Well, I'm, this is like early 2000s, so it's just like. I'm like, right. what's the thing about tallest? Why? And yeah. Because it was opposite Tom Welling. Right. They need somebody. Big dude, yeah. Okay, cool. He's like 6'3", I think. Um, so I go in and I get it. I, it was one audition. Sean Levy was there. It was great. It was very simple. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and so we shot all this stuff, and then the movie's coming out, and Sean Levy was lovely enough to call my agent at the time and say, so we're cutting all of the B-plots. Mm. It's just gonna be the family. So Steve Martin's character had like a coach buddy and a whole thing with that, and then Bonnie, um, Bonnie had a whole thing, yep. and then uh, I know Hillary had like a friend, and then Tom had me, and they had all of these, and so they got rid of all of the B-plots, everything. So it wasn't personal, whatever. So I got cut out of the movie, yeah. but I still, get I still get checks for that thing. That's you get, cool. You get paid for the amount of days you were working. And so how many days did you work I on think it? I, I, I think it was only like a small week. It was quick. It was but, all in one location. And you're still getting the residual Oh, checks. yeah. It's so cute. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cheaper by the time. horrible. Um, but yeah, it was fun and, you know, being on a set with all those people. Oh, well, I was ready. Hair and makeup got me done early. And I was just wake, waiting around um, next to Video Village where they keep mm -hmm. the chairs yeah, and the yeah. monitors. And um, all of a sudden, I'd been there for maybe 15, 20 minutes, all of a sudden, Steve Martin comes up to me. Mm. He said, oh, hey, hey, sorry, sorry. Hi, Steve. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, hi, I'm Tiffany. Yeah. And he goes, I didn't realize you were one of us. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and that was either the best, most amazing thing you could have said or the most pretentious thing, depending on which way you want to look at yeah. it. But I took it as, oh, he didn't know I was one of the cast members and he wanted to make sure he welcomed me. And I was like, Steve Martin just said I was I'm one of I'm one of us. I'm one of them. I'm with him. <laughs> hey, you'll take amazing. it, especially like just starting my out first, first movie. I mean, I've been I mean, in like on. three months yeah. and Steve Martin's telling me, Welcome to set. That's awesome. A, that's a great cast too. So good. Yeah. It was great. That's was cool. Great. You've got some stories. I have some stories. That's not even no. It's probably just scraping the surface. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sixteen years. <laughs> so it's been a thing. Yeah, no yeah. question. Well, why don't we put a bow on it? When people check out Brian Banks uh, early August. Yes. What's the biggest takeaway you want them to have? Oh, wow. Brian Banks. Wow. There's so many things I could say. Right now, I think um, this movie is going to really make sure we all check in on a much deeper level with ourselves and how we are approaching each other. And it goes beyond race. It goes beyond um, class. And... Uh, we're all human beings doing our best, and it's hard. Mm. And the power of where your focus is is the difference between making it and not. So, well said. Uh, thank you. Uh, this movie is so special to me and to everyone who made it, and I know that the people who see it will understand what I'm saying. Well, Tiff, it's been a pleasure. Likewise. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you. Brian so Banks, fun. August 9th, and then 911. When's that coming back? Oh, uh, when is 911 coming back? I actually. Somewhere in August? No, no. We're going back to set, I think. Okay. Or people are at some point. People are going back to set. Season two, season three. three. Season oh, three. Season three. All right. Number one, number one viewed show on Fox. There you go. That's scripted. All right. Good yeah. deal. That's Tiff. I'm DJ. We'll see you next time. Try to sit down.